हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर आयुषी पालीवाल फ्रॉम यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ डेली टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक ऑन द मॉड्यूल ट्रांसमिशन इलेक्ट्रॉन माइक्रोस्कोपी टेम अंडर द पेपर नैनो साइंस एंड नैनो टेक्नोलॉजी फर्स्ट सो स्टूडेंट्स आफ्टर कंप्लीटिंग दिस मॉड्यूल यू विल बी एबल टू लर्न number 1 the working principle of tem second instrumentation of tem thirdly brief description of each component of tem will be described next we will discuss about the image modes of tem and how does the electron interacts with the matter lastly we discussed about the tem sample preparation and thinning the sample by different techniques so students let us start with a basic introduction about the module tem is also known as a conventional transmission electron microscopy or ctem max nol and ernst rieske invented in 1993 in berlin so modern transmission electron microscopes usually consist of a beam column that is about 2.5 meter tall with a diameter of 30 cm and they are able to achieve a resolution of about 2 angstrom so a technique which is used for analyzing the morphology defects crystallographic structure particle size and even the composition of a specimen working principle of tem an extremely thin sample is required for scanning in this method from which electron beam is passed through rendering its interaction with the sample as a result of which image is produced thus this so formed image can be magnified and focused on the device used for an imaging like a fluorescent screen on a photographic film layer or to be identified by a sensor like a ccd camera let us now discuss about the instrumentation of tem this figure shows the explanatory instrumentation of tem where there is a source of electron gun based on thermionic emission beam of electron electromagnetic lenses are there vacuum chamber is there two condenser lenses objective and intermediate lens sample holder and stage now the imaging device is a phosphor or fluorescent screen which are interfaced with the computer now let us discuss the brief description of the components of tem first component is the electron gun electrons can either be produced by thermionic emission or in a process called as cold field emission during thermionic emission a very fine tip of a tungsten filament the uh, short key 220 volt short key emitter it is heated by an electrical current flowing through the electron source enabling the escape of electrons so the electrons which are leaving the filament having a low energy and therefore need to be accelerated to the desired speed before entering the electron column so the electron gun working can be controlled based on three parameters first the accelerating voltage second the current of the filament and therefore its temperature and the velmant cap bias voltage so the temperature of the filament tip 
is controlled by the filament current which in turn controls the amount of emitted electrons. The filament current is increased till the emitted current no longer increases, which actually means that filament is saturated in order to maximize the emission. So the passing current amongst the system of high voltage as well as earth is controlled by the bias resistor setting which in turn is controlled by the gun bias. On small bias voltage when the well meant negative potential is compared to the filament is ineffective which means the electrons that are accelerated in anode direction is relatively with slight focusing. So the beam is constant, consequently spread and appears weak on the screen. So when the biasing is increased, then the focusing action is improved. Therefore, the effective beam brightness is also increased. But beyond a certain value, the well meant it is also negative in comparison to the filament than the brightness starts to decrease because electrons are not permitted to emit from the filament or in a case they are emitted so they are repelled back in the direction of the filament. So the point on which the finest brightness of the beam is attained is determined by the distance amongst the velment and the filament. Let us now discuss about the electromagnetic lenses. Electromagnetic lenses consist of a huge bundle of bindings of insulated copper wire, a soft iron cast and a pole piece as shown in the figure A. A magnetic field is induced by the current in the winding and reaches its main strength at the pole piece of the lens. The accelerated electrons entering the magnetic field are deviated following the law of a charge passing a magnetic field. The direction of both the magnetic field as well as electrons defines the resultant force which is always perpendicular to the plane. So in conclusion, the electrons takes a circular path through the lens system as shown in this figure. Condenser lens system. The beam diameter is reduced and controlled by the action of condenser lens system. The purpose of first condenser C1 lens or spot size which is a strong lens is to demagnify the electron source image by means of around x1 by 100 to provide a small point source at the crossover that is more coherent than the large 50 micron diameter tip of the filament. The purpose of the second condenser C2 is brightness or intensity which is a weaker lens is to project the demagnified image of the source on the top of the sample by a magnification of x2, giving an overall demagnification of x1 by 50. So illumination scatter onto the screen is controlled by this lens. A part named as condenser aperture is positioned just below or sometimes amongst the condenser lenses. Its role is to collimate that is making the beam parallel of the electrons as well as modification in its intensity. Let us now discuss about the objective and intermediate lenses. The reason behind the back focal plane being very close to the lens itself is because the magnification factor of the objective lens is larger. So aperture of the objective 
it's the middle aperture on the column is mounted in the back focal plane inside the first image plane beneath the sample selected area aperture is placed that is underneath both the objective lens and the objective aperture so by altering the first projector lens excitation which is also known as the intermediate lens or diffraction lens either an image or a diffraction pattern is reduced specimen holders and stages in tem the electron column does not offer a lot of space for the sample additionally the sample should be fine it should be thin so that the electrons can penetrate the specimen and forms an image the average thickness of biological specimen should be around 70 nanometer for a tem with an acceleration voltage for the electrons of approximately 100 kilovolts so the higher the voltage the thicker specimens can be examined thin sections of the specimen are mounted on the copper grids of 3 mm diameter which are available in a wide variety of materials and mesh sizes the grids with the sections on the top are attached in a holder and introduced into the goniometer of the tem through a vacuum lock since the system always stays under high vacuum the goniometer is the mechanical setup which enables highly precise and stable control of the specimen holder during imaging so any drift or instability results in unsharp image in particular at high magnifications let us now discuss about the vacuum system which is used for studying the tem vacuum system is employed in electron microscopes for four reasons number 1 as scattering of electrons is easy therefore electrons mean free path at atmospheric pressure is only around 1 cm however at 10 to the power minus 6 pascal they can move around 6.5 meters so the purpose of the vacuum system is to provide the insulation amongst the filament of both the anode and the cathode as well as in the region around the field emitters thus hampering the undesirable electron gun electrical discharge in order to inhibit the oxidation and burning out of the filament oxygen is eliminated around the filament so sample contamination is decreased by reducing the interaction amongst the beam of the electrons and the molecules of the gas phosphor or fluorescent screen imaging devices now there are two procedures for specimen observations in tem as shown in this figure first one is the image mode and second one in the diffraction mode in the case of image mode the electron beam hitting the sample is controlled by condenser lens and the aperture the beam which is transmitted will be focused and enlarged by objective and projector lens thus the image is formed on the screen with identifiable information in relation to the microstructure of the sample so in the case of diffraction mode at the fluorescent screen a diffraction pattern is attained which has originated from the electron beam illuminated the sample region so this pattern of diffraction is completely equal to that of a pattern of xrd the spot pattern is produced by a single crystal on the screen whereas polycrystal produces a pattern of powder or a ring so the purpose of the image mode is to analyze the microstructure 
for example, the green size and lattice defects, whereas the use of diffraction mode is to examine the crystalline structure. The image modes of TEM. So, in a TEM, there are two primary image modes which vary in a style based on a technique. On objective aperture, is utilized as a filter in electron optics system. These are bright field microscopy, as shown in this figure, and dark field microscopy. In bright field imaging, the image formed of a thin sample is by the electrons that permit through the film deprived of diffraction. The diaphragm is used to stop the diffracted electrons. In the corresponding dark field imaging modes, the image is formed by a diffracted beam. So the technique is called as bright field which is mainly sensitive to the extended crystal lattice defects in an otherwise ordered crystal such as dislocations. So the electron rays corresponding to the bright field and the dark field imaging are shown in this figure. Let us now discuss about how does the electron interacts with the matter. The interaction between the electron beam and the sample is coulombic. The negatively charged electrons can interact strongly with the electron cloud in the solid and also the positively charged nucleus. In contrast, the rays that are EM radiation, basically X-rays, and they only interact with the electron cloud. In TEM, for imaging purposes, only the forward scattered electrons are of interest. So these are of two main types, elastic, this represents the coherent scattering mainly with no loss of energy. And second one is non-elastic that is there is a also phase relation with the incident radiation. In elastic, the energy of the scattering electrons is lower than the incident beam. These are also incoherent radiation with no phase relation with the incident radiation. Students, let us now discuss how the samples are prepared for TEM analysis. Significant part of TEM is its sample preparation for the analysis. So there are two main conditions for TEM sample preparation. Number one, the electron should be transparent if not the whole sample, at least ROI should be thin. The allowed thickness value for the metallic sample is 30 to 50 nanometer. Usually 100 nanometer is an upper limit for the sample thickness. The sample ought to be mechanically strong for the treatment. So TEM samples are either self-supported or mounted on a grid for the analysis. Copper grids are the most commonly used, though for high temperature work, no grids are used. That is, MO grids are used. For nanoparticles and thin films, a carbon film is used as a support. AC has low contrast in the TEM and will not obscure the contrast arising from the specimen. So, there are typical SEM grids which are shown in this figure. Thinning the sample by different technique. Let us discuss the first technique that is electrolytic polishing. Electrolytic polishing is used for conducting samples like metals, alloys in order to produce the samples that are electron transparent. The initial sheet thickness can be around a few hundred micron which can be prepared by rolling or grinding the bulk specimens. Similarly, metal coatings on the substrates can be peeled off and used for the final thinning. Thin discs can be also be cut from the bulk specimen, which is called as the coring. 
these discs are thinned by electrolytic polishing electrolytic polishing technique is the window technique so the sample is made the anode and a thin stainless sheet is made the cathode the sample is immersed in the electrolyte which is usually cooled by the water or liquid nitrogen so perchloric acid is usually used as the electrolyte and the sample edges they are covered by lacquer to expose a window so the experimental setup and the hole generation are shown in this figure so when a current is applied the material is dissolved from the anode and deposits on the cathode the second type of technique is the iron milling technique so for non conducting samples usually grinding and polishing steps are used in order to reduce the sample thickness so some an ultra micro tome is used in order to generate the thin samples these can be either electron transparent or can be used as the starting material for further thinning the schematic of this technique is shown in this figure so for the samples where ultra micro tome cannot be used then a standard tripod polisher is used in order to thin the sample this produces samples that are few nanometer thick and the final polishing step is done by an iron beam miller the third type of technique is the cross section sample preparation now here the slices they are cut from the sample using a diamond slicer so these slices they are placed between the spacer layers and then glued onto a grid the slices are glued in such a way that the interface is parallel to the slot in the grid this sample is then thinned by standard tripod polishing until it is a few micron thick the final sample is thinned by using an iron beam miller to create an electron transparent sample the next type of technique is the replica technique replica technique is used for studying the bulk specimens which cannot be destroyed to prepare the electron specimens it is also useful for studying the surface topography features and precipitates through sem techniques have gradually replaced the replica sample preparation a replica of the sample surface is prepared by using a plastic mold the mold is then removed from the surface and the surface of the specimen is replicated by the surface of the plastic so a thin film of carbon or metal like chromium platinum is evaporated on the surface of the plastic sometimes the evaporation is done from an oblique angle shadow evaporation to enhance the contrast the plastic is removed by dissolving it in a suitable solvent and the film is then floated onto a grid for the analysis so this shows the replica technique for sample preparation so students let us summarize what we have learned in this module firstly we discussed about the working principle of tem second the instrumentation of tem was discussed thirdly each component of tem was described in detail next we discussed the different imaging modes of tem and how the electrons interacts with matter were discussed lastly the samples which are prepared of which are prepared for the tem analysis how they are prepared and how the thinning of the sample is done by various techniques were also discussed in this module thank you